I had a case where the parents said the child should be counting up to 50. Wow, had teachers paid enough? <laughs> <clears throat> Especially now you're in a special school, are teachers paid enough? At the time, you can see he's quick to finish. Sure. What do they say, you know? which is wrong. So I've always known that at some point I'll be in the education states. I'm actually oh. letting him to be. He flourishes in his own space. Oh. I was funded by the Funda Lushaga. Yes. And um, they were play, I was placed. Oh. That uncle so so is busy fidgeting with the baby. Yes. Or what is most cases are discovered. Yes. Sometimes we as teachers are very narrow in doing things. Mm. Astronaut. There wouldn't be an astronaut because of the teacher. Yes. In that way, yes, we can say we are not paid enough. I'm a teacher. My name is Twala, and I teach autistic learners in the special school in Chorteng. Um, what made you want to be a teacher, and why specifically a uh, special school? Okay, I've always dreamed of being a teacher. Well, that's a common statement, I know. Mm -hmm. However, um, knowing our economic context is black people, if I could say it that way. Yeah. One has to go start working, and then before you know it, you really are not satisfied where you are until you pursue your passion. Sure. So the whole point was that I worked for about 15 years for financial services. Before being a teacher? Before being a teacher. Wow. So when opportunity presented itself, I then grabbed it. So it's like, uh, was it a calling or something? I mean, 15 years already working, why? Like teaching seriously, right? Look, I'm a child of a teacher. Like my dad was a teacher. Ah. Uh, my maiden surname is Mkwanazi, so whoever knows, my father was Mr. Mkwanazi teaching at foundation phase, okay. primary school level at that time. Sure. So I've always known that at some point I'll be in the education space. All right. So where did you study? I studied at VETS. It means for my teaching. Yes, for the teaching. My B.Ed. is my B.Ed. at VETS. Yes. 2015 to 2018. Sure. Then I did my honors at VETS. Mm -hmm. And then did my post masters at VETS. Masters? Yep. Why? I mean, I thought teaching you just need a degree and then you go teach. Why did you go get, you know, an honors and a masters? Um, did they pay you for that or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Mm -hmm. If you do it for money, then yeah, you'll have issues. I know we need the money. Mm -hmm. However, it's not always about the money. Yes. It's about achieving what you desire to achieve. I've always known that I've been in the academic space. Oh. So I'm not paid for having my masters, yes. but I'm rewarded. Because, I mean, many people just, like I said, being a teacher is just a bare minimum. You get the diploma back in the day or today now it's a degree. And that's it. I can even become a principal eventually just, you know, being, having a degree. So there's no other inherent thing of chasing education. Why get all these masters, you know? Or one day you wanna get a PhD, do you wanna be a professor, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I am currently studying with UJ, doing my post, it's an advanced diploma in remedial education. I sure. fully believe, because BN on its own is structured in a way that you teach a normal class. Mm -hmm. So I'm at a special school. For me to know what I'm doing, I need to equip myself. So some short workshops that we get don't necessarily give you the whole picture of how to do this or how to go about teaching special kids. Yes, so back to your question as to why I, I pursue, as a teacher, you, know, you need to be ahead. Mm. There is no way you can continuously have your BA and you, it eventually gets to a point where you get bored. Yes. Not bored with the kids because you have different kids all the time. Sure. But what complacent, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. So it's better when you have something that keeps driving you, that keeps driving you as you learn, as you actually 
equip yourself because sure. you can only take your learners as far as you are. Uh, so, um, and with that being said, like I hear you, like the special schools, is there like a specific course to be a teacher in a special school or all teachers can just come and teach in a special school? Um, with the current status quo is education, inclusive education. Oh, okay. Um, you get to have inclusive module and it's all about inclusive education, inclusive education, inclusive education, and then you are placed. In my case, I did not go and look for a job at a special school. Yes. It found me. Sure. Because I was funded by the Funda Lushaga. Yes. And um, they were I was placed. Oh, okay. So that's how I got to be in a special school. So there's not a specific course that in like one of the modules that you do that has like I don't know, is it Elson or something like that? A learner with special no. needs or something? I'm not I think sure. that's a gap yes. that we have in our South African education system. Sure. Because it's a four-year degree, yes. you inclusive. You have, they give you modules where mm. you learn about. It's actually a touch situation where they'll say, in a class where you've got dyslexic kids, this is how you're going to do it. If you've got a slow learner differentiation, yes. and that's when it ends. However, there is a huge gap where we need to actually have modules that um, are taught at varsity level yes. for special kids. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I'm sorry about that, but I just want to elaborate on something. Sure. When we say special kids, we actually don't, we have a variety of them. It's barriers, it's oh. learning barriers. So I get the degree and I can just go and apply for work or do I have to register somewhere? Like, uh, you know, lawyers, accountants, there's psyche, there's associations, wherever they go. So with teaching, what is it? Is it yes. just, I get a degree and I just start applying? What so do I do? We've got a body, it's called SAIS. SAIS. Yes. yes. All right. And that's where one has to go there and yes. register and exactly. then I can start teaching. Yes, it's the South African Council of Educations. Oh, you okay. have to have your number. Yes. That's why you get when there's cases where there's um, teachers who have, uh, what, uh, what do you call, a record, criminal record and sure. all that, under the body there's, uh, there's a policy that actually cuts you off or those kind of things, but that's the body that is the same as the HPS for, oh. the, for the health organization. What is a special school really and as opposed to a mainstream school? And who does it cater for? In, in the context of South Africa, we have mainstream schools which cater for every child, uh, full service school which cater for kids with uh, learning barriers as well. However, we've got then uh, what we call Essen schools where the learners are more SID, which is severe intellectual disability, or um, MID, which is medium intellectual disability. Sure. And the special schools cater for all those learners who've got severe learning areas or medium severe learning areas, as well as the environment that is conducive for them because most uh, uh, mainstream schools don't have the environment that is conducive for learners with disabilities. Yes. Is there separation or they are all just like mainstream, put them all together, and then we just call it a special school? Yeah. Um, with autistic learners within the special schools, they've got different classes. Yes. They, don't, they, they are not more like catered in the same class with other learners sure. because of their spectrums and all that. Mm -hmm. And then with all others, then they'll be in the same school. I'm talking from a context of South Africa, by the yes. way, and of the Houghton region where I am. Sure. And out of my observations, it's after kids are referred to the school, then they are placed within classes where they fit in. Yes. Um, sometimes because of lack of, um, I would say, resources, you find that you've got different levels in the same class, mm. uh, which is something that uh, needs to be looked at in a more detail. However, as a teacher, I think that's more the reason why I keep studying. It's the equipping of myself to deal with such cases because yes. I have no control of the system at the moment. So speaking to that, like, what challenges do most of our learners, these special needs kids, actually face in schools, in special schools? Um, one, I'm talking, that's a very 
would say that question is um, a bit narrowed, if I can mm. put it that way, yes. because within themselves, within a school environment that caters for them, sure. they come with multiple issues. Yes. For then they bring them from the society itself, yes. from the environment where they stay, from um, parents themselves. Sure. So some of the kids come here with no. Normally, we don't have some schools don't have school uniform. Not yes. because there isn't a way of having school uniform, but yes. because they are they are scared of being stigmatized. Sure, I would and, imagine. Yeah. The the learners or the parents or who. The learners themselves. The learners themselves, yes. yes. Or who are aware of them being in a special yes. school. Because yes. the society, when the sure. society is aware that these kids are at a special school, then the identification, remember how you identify a child or as to which school they belong, it's through the uniform. Yes. So as soon as the, 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 the other learners or other kids in the township see them with the uniform, then they are stigmatized. Um, I don't want to use, yes. you must be politically correct. What do they say, you know? Ekasi, what in yeah, or yes. something, which is wrong. I see, okay. And maybe most won't even want to go back to school. Then to we've that. got a lot of dropouts, yes. which causes more kids being at home. Yes. Those are, that speaks to the system. And then when it comes to family as well, you find mm. that um, it's one child within a family that's got this uh, Challenge. disability, then it's that child being ostracized a bit. What is the school or government doing to create an inclusive and supportive learning environment? Speaking to those stigmas about uh, the kids thinking, yo, Aish, what are people going to say when I mean, I'm going to this school? So what is the government or your school doing to create that inclusive, supportive environment for them? Like now in our school, we have consumption. And normally it is not that it's autistic kids don't go to such function. Why? Why is that? Sorry to cut you off. Why? Because of the spectrums. I oh. think we need more education in that area. Sure. Because not every child uh, can mix with other people. Yes. That, that's a story for another day. Um, we, in my class, yes. particularly, sure. uh, I'll speak for myself. I take them to, to those to other children. I take them to other events within the school. Yes. Because I fully believe they, they, they're from a community. They are not from other space, they are from a community. They sure. need to function within the community. Yes. And for them to function within that community is to allow them to be in the same space with other children so that inclusive education, inclusivity actually makes yes. it practical more than just being a deal. Sure. So, yeah, what teaching methods or strategies have you found most effective in teaching and what are they available for such a school? You see, when it comes to teaching learners with diversified learning barriers, it becomes a problem to stick to one strategy. Yes. Because then you are actually putting yourself in a corner where you will not achieve the results. Mm. Remember, we are directed by the curriculum. Yes, there's different strategies. Right now, I'm working with one of my learners. Yes. We are doing a letter identification yes. while um, checking his eye-hand coordination. Sure. So, that being said, because he takes one instruction at a time, you can see he's quick to finish. Sure. And if I stick to one strategy, it's not going to work. I have to pull him back. Yeah. I have to show him the letters. Mm -hmm. We have to look at the letters. He needs to realize what he is doing. I because see. the whole point... He even switched it is. around to know... Can you see? Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yeah, something the whole point is about him being able to take the skill, transferring the skill practically. He's yes. not doing that now. Sure. He identifies the letters. This is yes. his name. Yes. Generally, a child in grade one should be able to write his name. Sure. He's non-verbal. Yes. He wants to finish the work. He just wants to he be wants done. He wants to finish. Oh. So what do you do? You come back and, and you give it to him. This again. is a strategy that I'm using. For all. I'm using Valco in my class. That's sure. all I use because they cannot write. Yes. And do I want them to write? Definitely. Mm. However, it is something that is going to happen. You see, now he's, he's yeah. not connecting with anyone sure. because of the spectrum that he is in. Yes. Now I need to give it to him one-on-one -on -one and say, look at the letter. Mm -hmm. wow. Then he realizes that I can match the letter. Sure. These are the same. Am I sure that he knows what his name is? 
Um, I don't think so. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. Is sure. I have to do this the whole year. Yes. He can hear his name, but, but he, he, he identifies the letters. Yes. But he couldn't correct his name. Yes. So this is something that we need to. It's a skill that I need. By the end of the term, I need. By the end of the year, actually. Sure. He must know how to identify his name. Even look, just looking at papers, mm. his surname, just looking at papers, because out of the school he needs to go and work. I, so I see your thesis, your PhD, you want to be doing more research. Eh, on Definitely. Doing this. I see. And you must remember, I spoke to Sandile in two languages, in addition yeah. and Sizul. Yes. He's from a Zulu home. Sure. And um, this learner language development is informed by his home language. Sure. So one of the methods, most of the time you find every time people want to speak to children with English, mm. you need to actually incorporate African languages within well. the teaching space oh, because yeah. these learners have barriers already. So language shouldn't be one of the main ones. That's sad. Uh, yes. In, 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 in such a situation, knowing that maybe the number of learners you have in a class, how do you ensure that each student uh, gets individual attention. So how do you get to really give them their time individually and make sure that their needs are met? Look, I'm going to work with another one now. Yes. You'll see they are different. Okay. He is also nonverbal, but he's able to use sounds. The, t the little sounds that he is able to use, you can see that uh, they're different. Strategies are different from their one. I have another learner here. Same exercise like I did with the previous one. Sure. This one identifies letters. He identifies his name. Yes. And he's able to actually voice out. And the difference with this one, I'm giving him all the letters. Yes. I'm leaving him. He's more independent than that one. Yes. If I have to, did you, did you hear that? He said E. e. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The spectrums are different. Yes. The barriers, the barrier, they're both autistic, but they are not both dependent. Sure. This one is independent. Oh, okay. And I'm meeting his need by not following him around. Yes. I'm actually letting him to be. He flourishes True. in his own space. Oh. That one needs a one, one on one, direct one on one, and more correction. He is able, yet this one is able to identify letters. He is able to even transfer the skill of letters. Sure. I don't have, so in that way you meet two needs in different strategies, same exercise, but the results are not the same. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a, a very tricky way of teaching every day. It's like you have a curriculum for individual kids, basically. It's yes. like we are talking individually. Uh, Sandile has his own, Ethan has his own. Wow, no, that takes its toll on you. It's the same exercise, but different methodologies but different. on how to achieve the objective. Sure. And what impact, if any, do our special schools have on the lives of the students and their families? Um, a lot. The yes. change of environment um, is very important to the teaching and learning of a child. Yes. So if we were to talk about how learners learn, number one, mm -hmm. that an impact a special school has on how a learner learns. Mm -hmm. It's not a one size fits all. We take the education to the child. We sure. take the learning to the child. Yes. It's, it's opposite to a normal mainstream school where the child sits there behind the desk and gets to be sort of lectured. Yes. This one is a one-on-one. -on -one. You look at them, you identify a barrier, you teach them according to their own understanding and eventually get to achieve the objective. And it's one step at a time. So uh, in that being said, what about parents? Because do parents become like accepting of their kids or are they also overly ambitious, expecting and you guys are teaching or you're not teaching, the child can't do, like you were saying with the other learner, the parent is still saying, ah, oh, you guys are not teaching my child. By now, my child should be able to read and write. I don't know. It's a, it's a social norm. Yes. Pa and parents play a huge role in understanding that I can't do it. can't do it all as a, as a teacher. Sure. I'm structured within a curriculum. Yes. So that being said, I will teach ABC, I will teach one, two, three, I will teach Abaka, I will teach primary colors. Mm. Transferring that skill to the home basis, I need the parent. Okay. If the parent uh, 
while cleaning can tell the child this is color blue. Yes. That, that in that way, the parent is actually teaching the child, reinforcing what the teacher has done in class, sure. being able to pass the skill to the child. In that way, the child learns. But we have a problem, so, and not just in special schools. So does the school, or as you as a teacher, I don't know, do you also do you have liberty to engage the parents in that manner, on that level, to say, look, I do my part, you also need to do your part. Or is it like you drop them off, I'm also... I will speak for myself yes. as a teacher within the <laughs> sure. context of South Africa. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have done that. Sure. And I continuously do that. Yes. Because I fully believe parental involvement will help our kids achieve. And some parents, yes, with your prior, in your past question when you said, are they accepting? Some parents yes. are not. It becomes so difficult. Sure. By the time term one ends, I had a case where the parents said the child should be counting up to 50. Wow. But our differentiated curriculum says in grade one, the child should count up to 10. Yes. And first term, actually, it's five. Yo. However, I do stretch learners to count up to where they can. But remember, when I write the report, it has to be in line with the curriculum. The curriculum. Yes. So even when I write my comments, I would say the child is able to come count up to this and beyond sure. to accommodate your knowledge as a parent, yes. to accommodate what I did in class. Sure. So we are confined by the curriculum and the system of how it should work. No, no, I see. In your opinion, what role does education that they get in this classroom, in a special school, have in their lives, like leaving the school? So are they going to get a certificate for being here? Are they going to get a metric? Can they get a job? What is it? What exactly are they getting from here once they get a certain age? What can they do with that? So in essence, like the curriculum, where does it end? Because I hear the grade one, they must count from one until five or 10. And then after that, once they, let's just say 18, I, I would just want to know what would they be doing at that age? And what's the way forward for them in our economy, you know? I know the <clears throat> education needs to speak to our economy in general. Yes. Um, I'm going to make this illustrative. Think of a child who's looking at Ifai Rand and goes to a shop and gives Ikesha Ifai Rand, buys Ikesha piece and leaves. Mm. What is that saying to you? That child doesn't know money. Yes. The purpose of this child being at school is this child to know money. Sure. Because money is in the curriculum to identify, even if they don't know it's 10 rand. But if I teach them the identification of how 10 rand looks, they will know 10 rand is green, 10 rand has got this um, one of the animals. OK, so if they say it's 5 rand, I sh definitely I should be waiting for a change. Sure. So practically, yes, in that aspect, having a 20% theory yeah. and the practical side of it, it's good on paper. Sure. We should be facilitating it as teachers. Yes. Just now I showed you how I transfer the skill of letter identification for, oh, for their names. own names. Yes. This is how they should learn. Mm. It doesn't help for them to sit at a desk and say, um, this is how you should write your name and write cursives. It's not going to work with them. Mm. So after this, they're going to go to intermediate. They're going to go to senior where they're now going to be taught skill. Remember, while you're taught skill, you need to know how to identify. Mm. My job in the foundation phase is to help them identify, mm. help them to make sense of this and that, that sure. letter, that, so that even when they read receipts or they look at pictures of receipts, they know sequence. Sure. They, we did sequence. From left to right. From left yeah. to right. Sure. So if they look at a recipe of, of cakes or one mm. they want to bake, they are looking at what sequence yes. it's done at the foundation level. Oh. By the time they get to senior phase, then they know sequence. Teachers don't have to start at that point. Yes. Then they do the skill that they need, and out of the school, they will add into the economy by plumbing, baking, or doing any other thing that's... So it is possible. It is possible. Very much so. It is possible. With the system, we cannot do it without parents. Parental involvement. They are the first teachers of their own kids. Mm. No, I, I just wanted to make sure, like, you know, these kids will actually play a role in society and do not find themselves becoming hardened criminals. You know, that's one of the things that scares me for them as well. You actually speak like a society yeah. member that is very concerned, which is good. Sure. And imagine if we had 
All the teachers had one vision, to make sure that these kids contribute to a society. Sure. I do my part, the next one does their part, and the third one does their part. Definitely it is possible. We can go somewhere. We can go somewhere. All right, so there's no certificate when I leave here from this school? Nothing? From the school, there's yeah. a, a report. That Just a report? Take. That um, says what? That know. says um, achieved, great, so much and so much, achieved in baking, achieved in beauty or whatever that they're going, the stream they're going to choose in senior phase. Oh, okay. That's the only thing they will have. It's like your senior certificate. You've reached grade five, according to the system. Sure. I understand that you guys are the most scrutinized uh, employees in society, checking your fingerprints, sex offenders, and whatnot. So how important is that, especially with these kids who can't even voice out their, you know, like if somebody has done them wrong? And that's why I asked about maybe the safety and empowering of the kids. <coughs> Do special schools take this seriously, especially in that kind of situation um, where they can't voice out and they can't speak for themselves? One of the most important instincts, or rather quality a teacher has got to have is observation. Yes. You come into a class, this child starts behaving other ways. Yes. The first thing you pick up is this child does not behave like yesterday. Mm. You keep a track record. Why? Sure. You ask yourself why, is there? then slowly you get to discover, that's why most cases are discovered at schools, yes. that uncle so-so is. is busy fidgeting with the baby, yes. or what is, most mm. cases are discovered at schools. Cool. And if teachers would be more observant, they would realize the root problem of misbehavior. And mm. um, number two, we need to tell. We need to tell. Sure. Uh, we need to when be teachers that are not afraid to tell. Whether you are going to say a whistleblower on you yes. or what. Mm. My biggest, biggest priority is the child and the well-being of the child. And thanks for showing us your classroom and your teaching techniques and showing us individual learners how you teach them and the spectrum, as you were saying, the differences they have. What can like, be improved in special schools for learners? holistically, all of you, what can be done to improve special schools? Number one, the government. Yes. Look, I think looking at the trajectory of where we come from as a country, sure. the government has played quite a significant role. I don't want to lie. Yes. However, there's lots of improvement. More mm -hmm. training on the understanding of policy for teachers. Yes. Because um, the learners that we get in special schools, some of them shouldn't be in special schools sure. because of misplacement, because policy was not followed, especially the screening identification policy, which is called the CS. If the government can make sure that that policy, as teachers, we sing it, we yes. speak it, we understand it. Yeah. Number two, they need to improve on inclusion. Inclusion is not is on paper. Sure. The, the cut of what it is in, in the classroom becomes a problem. Yes. You know? And teachers need to educate themselves about that. Yes. They need to go and know what inclusion is, what inclusion isn't. Yes. Like, you cannot be sending a child to a special school because they need a hearing aid. Mm. Academically, that child is okay. But because of the hearing aid, they then come it's to a teaching to a sure. special school. It's not like that. Mm. And then from parent, parents need to be involved. You need to know what your child does at school. If mm. it takes you to come and volunteer to, I mean, well, at times we, we, we all say there's no resources. Sometimes yes. you are a human resource that just needs to come and pick away its chairs. And sure. just reading time you read to the learners. It's, sure. it's not something that is bad. Yes, controlled, of course. From the teachers, we need to continuously, continuously engage, collaborate with others. We don't know it all. I, I, I have a master's, but I don't master everything. I need other teachers who've got better knowledge than me, who are experienced in other areas, who even if they don't have a master's, but what they've done, they've done teaching for longer than I've done. Yes. They know more, they know, they understand what to do. And taking it from that level, I am able then to learn from them. It's called collaboration. There is nothing that is more important in the teaching fraternity like collaborating. And for the society, 
these kids come from a society. Sure. The society needs to be receptive, accommodative. I'm not saying spoil them. I'm saying help them merge within the society and perform and be able to be part of the society. Some mm. of them don't want your, your, your sympathy. They just want you to train them. Sure. A, a, a guy from a corner who's who cut a, a barber. Yes. Can help one child, take one child, one boy, mm. and, and show him how to, how to cut hair. To cut hair. Yeah, the mm. cutting skill. This yes. is a societal matter. It's not sure. just a matter in the classroom. That's true. What's most rewarding working in a special school? Because, you know, I, I thought one would always be frustrated doing the same thing over and over again with one child. So what is the most rewarding thing for you working in a special school? The love. Yes. The love you get from these kids, you... Sorry to be corny, is that what Lutando means or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, that was cheesy. <clears throat> I impart the love. Yes. They, they reciprocate the love. Sure. They give you comfort in understanding that the world can be a better place only if everybody plays their part. Yes. That's the most rewarding. They might not wake up tomorrow morning and tell me what I taught them yesterday. Sure. But what the thing that is definite that I can tell you is that while they are playing my observations, they will tell you mm. that they will actually give you numbers, they will actually give you colors, they will yeah. actually spell out one letter and then you realize, oh, all this while I've been doing my job. Mm. It's just that it's not as, as, as normal as and we want it to be, mm. but everyone is special. So is that what keeps you motivated every day coming back? seeing the kids again, what Waking keeps you motivated? Up. Mm. Waking up in the morning, what keeps me motivated is the fact that I am parting my knowledge to someone who's not going to, um, might not show me in every way that mm. they are learning, but who's going to someday be part of the, econ of the whole structure of the economic system. And that's, I'm playing my bit in the whole, in the whole big spectrum of the education. The smaller bit that I'm playing, I'm playing my part. But there must be times where you get frustrated or other teachers get frustrated and get depressed due to the nature of the, the environment, I think. Because so, it's not made for everybody because of the types of kids you get to work with every day. Are there programs that assist teachers with depression, maybe with dealing with working in a special school? You know what? Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate on that one. Yes. Uh, the truth of the matter is we, we have control. Mm -hmm. This is the system we work under. The government trusts you as an academic sure. to think of ways. Within a system of the school, the government wants a report from a principal. Yes. Within a system of the school, the principal wants a report from an HOD. Yes. The HOD wants a report from the teacher. So that structure stands. Yes. When the government does something or when the system is concerned, gives you the support, you mm. need to access the support. So the mm. question would be, do we access the support as mm. teachers or do we sit in, the, in our corner and complain or are we going to sit there and, well, and be the change that we are supposed to be? Issue is, are we solution driven as, the, as people who need to access the system? Or are we just going to complain over and over and over? Or are we going to access those uh, um, provisions? Okay. Provisions for teachers who are depressed are there. Yes. That's why you find that some of us as, uh, as employees of the government have got um, the access to counseling. Mm. But we don't access it because sometimes we are afraid that by the time it gets to the counselor, it gets to the school and then my matters are known by the whole school. Yes. So the issue then was back again to an to individual. Stigma. What do you want to do? Do you want to be a change? Mm. If you want to be a change, be the change that is needed within the system. When so-and-so comes to me and says, did you hear? And I say, what? Do I want to hear? I don't want to hear. My duty is, you know, to my duty is to teach. My duty, my duty is to empower even my peers. Yes. You know, it starts with me as a, as a person. It, it, it's, it's even out there, even in the corporate. Sure. Why do we then think that the government should be different? No, I hear you. No, that's true. And maybe, ask, do they get access to this information? I know there's Batupeli principles and what, but do they know about these things? That's where the problem is. Yeah. You, when we started, you said that as a teacher, you think that just having a B.A. It's enough. It's enough. Yeah. Within the <laughs> system, one thing I've learned, 
mm. is that this is not to put pin down on teachers. Sometimes yes. we as teachers are very narrow in doing things. Mm. I mean, we are living in a time of so much internet access. Yes. So much print that is there. Go into a government space. There's a print that is showing what the government has achieved. But instead of picking up that book and reading, reading we don't. Yeah. There is access to information and the JAMS website where it tells you where to go, how to go and what to access. We don't access it. Yeah. So information is there. Access to information, again, it boils down to me. Do I want to access the information? Do I want to change? Do I want to move with the times? Or I just want to be that old teacher who just wants to sit, be at, teach, go back home, drink, tea, go back home, or yeah. what do I want? And that can only speak to us as the teachers of the current time. To empower yourself. To empower ourselves. No, that's the, true. the government does try, the teachers does. However, again, that being mm. said, sometimes the information is withheld yeah. by the powers that be. <laughs> Wow. wow, I wonder why. Are teachers paid enough? <laughs> <clears throat> Especially now you're in a special school. Are teachers paid enough, honestly speaking? Maybe I, I don't think they are paid enough. Maybe I should start by correcting them is that we get paid more than others. No, we don't. We get paid the same salary. Yeah, we're, we're the same schools does same not school? matter. Does yes. it matter? We are, we, teachers from the Specialist schools are getting paid the same salary as the mainstream teachers. Yes. Are we getting paid enough? Um, it's a tough one. Again. Uh, Which job does pay enough? Not uh, necessarily. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's yes. go back to information, accessible information. Yes. When you look at um, salary scales across. Yes. We as teachers, I think I read one, one, one one article that showed us that we are not far away from a certain scale that we are actually paid according to what we deserve. Ah. Monetary. Okay. We are not far off sure. within the economic space. Yeah. The problem then comes when we compare uh, what professions. Yes. That a doctor Copies. is a doctor because of a teacher. Then mm. we are expecting that the teacher must be paid more because the doctor is um, what what was taught by the teacher or an astronaut. There wouldn't be an astronaut because of the teacher. Yes. In that way, yes, we can say we're not paid enough. But no. as far as economic factors are concerned, we are paid what we are supposed to be paid. Mm. So maybe after you get your PhD, are you going to go into the high office of policy making, maybe legislature? I don't know. What, uh, what's next for you? I think. I'm going to refer to the pay scale. Yeah, sure. This is where now the government becomes lax. Yes. We're... As a teacher who's got a master's, I'm still paid as a teacher who's got a PhD. Yes. That's where our complaints come in. Sure. That is, as I improve myself, yes. what do I get for it? Nothing. Yes, I love improving myself. Don't, but don't, there's don't no they give you, Sorry to cut you off. Don't you get a stipend? You something? get one off. Yeah, uh, or something like that. <laughs> you get one off. They, they, they gave you one off payment. Uh, mm. thingy. Yes. But fact is, um, like the health space, when you are five years and above and you've improved yourself, you move from one grade to another. Why is the teaching space doesn't have that? These are where the complaints come from. Oh, so here it's just that increment of what it's is the it? 1.5%? I don't yeah, know whichever one it is. Everyone gets it. It's not oh, as if yeah. you get it not just a uh, Even if it's PS stuff? Yes. Oh, okay. So that, in a way, impacts on people not improving themselves. Ish, What's no, the that's point? a problem. If the drive is salary, why are you not then giving uh, incentives for better salary for those who are qualified from mm. this level to this level? We all go through the start of applying to HOD, from HOD, deputy, deputy to principal. Sure. And if you don't want to go that way, yeah, no. what, are, what options are there for you? No, understood. So, what's next for you from this teaching? Or while you're still teaching, what do you want to do next? What's next? What's next for Lutando Twala? My next step. Yes. Imparting knowledge to parents as yes. to understanding, because that's my line, training and developing parents to understand their own kids. 
We mm. gave birth to them, the academic space is mine, but the holistic nature of a child is for me and you to make sure that child contributes in the society. When, as soon as you get knowledge that your child has got a learning barrier, that child is not a right off. Yeah. That's my space, that's where I want, that's my area. And by PhD, I want to access information about the CS policy, making sure that all schools, every area that accesses CS policy, yes. uses it to the, what it was intended for, mm -hmm. and, ha and making sure that the process is thoroughly followed. Then in that way, we won't fail any child, we won't fail any teacher, we won't fail any system. Sure. And for 2023, I'm finishing off my advanced diploma in remedial education because I want to start a school for dyslexic learners. Sure. That's my plan for 2023. Wow. It's going to be a private school. <coughs> I'd love for it to be a co-ed yeah. because I am sure, I mean, you've read the parents' report not so long ago that so many percentage of kids, grade fours, cannot read for comprehension. Mm. Have we tested them for dyslexic purposes? Maybe. Have we tested them for any other area or we just bought in a book, read, tell me what you understand. Yeah. Some kids are mathematically brilliant sure. and they cannot read. Yes. But they can be trained to be able to at least read and yeah. be able to answer short questions. Does sure. that right off the chart? Sure. What support do we give to dyslexic uh, uh, learners. Yeah. I know there's lots of support for autistic learners, which is brilliant, it's good. Sure. We have a problem. Learners who cannot do it for comprehension. What are we doing? Maybe yeah. they may be dyslexic. Yeah. Because we haven't zoomed into it, we haven't given it so much support. We are we are lax or rather we we are not prepared to give it more knowledge that we may be able to help the problem that we have in South Africa. Sure. I, I am sure we cannot help mother tongue. English, they can't read for comprehension, all of those. No. I'm sure there must be a learning so, barrier. Yes. No, thank you very much, Lutando. I think maybe you should become the new Minister of Education. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. No, all the best and with your future endeavors. And we hope to see you at that school and interview you again. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you.